Welcome to the Lifestyle Chase, Season 2. This podcast features high performers who have found a way to live their best life while balancing their health, wellness, friends, and family. I'm your host, Chris Little. Let's get started. The Lifestyle Chase is brought to you by Yeg Fitness. Yeg Fitness is Edmonton, Alberta, Canada's healthy lifestyle community, creating and supporting active living for all. Check them out online at yegfitness.ca and on social media at Yeg Fitness. Welcome to episode 81 of the Lifestyle Chase. I'm just going to be here with you, just me, riding solo, talking to you about whatever's on my mind. And there's going to be a little bit of a focus to this episode, but it's also going to be a bit freestyle. It's the first time that I've ever just, I mean, aside from recap episodes where I've talked about past episodes, this is going to be the first time where I've just talked to you about what is going on right here, right now. So what I want to start off with is my friend Kieran. He wanted to know what is going well. And I'm a little bit more philosophical and less literal. Like, I'm not going to dive into, like, financials. I'm not going to dive into clients or anything like that. I mean, I feel satisfied right now. I, like every personal trainer, have the ebbs and flows of busy weeks, quiet weeks. But at the end of the day, my bills get paid. And I'm doing a job that I enjoy. And honestly, when it comes down to, like, research proves that when you are in a mindset of gratitude and abundance, you tend to have more good things happen. Whether that just be your attitude going into the day, like having more of a a go for it attitude than a woe is me attitude, or maybe it's just uh, your just morale. As a self-employed person, as an employed person, whatever it may be, whether you're working for somebody else, whether you're working for yourself, if you've got a good attitude going into the day, that is good. That's important. So what is going well for me? Honestly, over the last year, I've put such a focus on my like relationship with friends and colleagues and people that I really don't know anything about that I would like to know more about. I've put a focus on getting to know other people a little bit better, just kind of flexing my skills at uh, at perspective, at putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. So we see all these like social media posts and have you ever seen like a social media post where somebody is saying something or articulating a stance that is not your stance? And you're like, I just do not agree with that. Well, it's one thing to just say, I, I like blue, they like green, they're wrong. But it's another thing to put in the research to be like, okay, what what can I learn about green that could make me understand why they like green? And if they ask me why I like blue, can I articulate why? Um, if you can get yourself to the point where you can list off all the pros of their favorite thing and all the cons of your favorite thing, that that is pretty versatile. I'll give you an example that's transferable to the fitness industry. We have keto, we have paleo, we have intermittent fasting, we have all these different diets. If you just don't like one, but you can articulate the benefits and you can articulate the cons of what you choose, but then you can justify your choice then you're further ahead than if you just blindly just put other people down. Because nobody likes being told they're stupid, you know? Like, if I think that what I am doing is right, and somebody says, no, you're wrong, I'm not automatically going to be like, oh, well, better stop doing that. Like, if one person likes burpees, and another person doesn't like burpees to say burpees are stupid isn't necessarily going to change the mind of the person who likes burpees because maybe maybe that's just their favorite thing to do to be active 
But if you have someone that is kind of on the fence and you can articulate your reasoning, like maybe it's just that like 50% of the people that you see doing burpees have a shoulder injury and you might be better at coaching push-ups and a goblet squat. So for that reason, then you chose to not do burpees, but then you might have somebody else that is a master at cueing a really proficient burpee and their clients all enjoy it. And for that reason, that's why they do it. And it's just, it's a conversation that we don't discuss very much. So I guess I kind of went off on a tangent, but what is going well for me is honestly communication. Like I think in this day and age, in this society, I think it's really important to prioritize people and to make time to just talk, to not have an agenda. You know what's what's annoying is when somebody messages you and then they're already trying to sell you something. It's like, hey, I just wanted to jump on a call and I just wanted to uh, just, you know, educate you on some things. Well, all of a sudden, you know that they're going to try and sell something. Um, I think it's great to be able to have relationships in your close vicinity or in your profession where you feel comfortable to be like, hey, I need somebody to talk to. And then somebody can step up and you can just talk through what's going on in your life, talk through some personal struggles, talk through maybe something that somebody else has gone through that you need some perspective on. Um, To be able to have those quick, uh, strong relationships in which you can sort of recruit somebody to help you out is a pretty healthy thing to have. I think uh, in this day of being so connected in which we we make a post and then we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're like, okay, how many people are going to like this? And then somebody likes this and then it's like, oh, I am connected now. I got all these likes. I feel so much better. It's a lot better to uh, have like maybe, let's say four people that know exactly how you feel and they know exactly what you're going through and they know what your normal looks like so they know when it is they should intervene or maybe they should like check in or maybe they should just be like a little bit more more pushy when it comes to like scheduling that coffee a lot of the time when we're in like a down a down time when we're in a slump where we're in when we're in a low um there's a lot of ego associated with that and we're not the quickest to admit you know like hey i'm feeling really really shitty because it could be a number of factors and everybody's different but here's a few that i'll draw from a lot of the people that i talk to and probably myself included is just like everybody kind of assumes that nobody has time to to have a visit but everybody that's been through something always feels best when they have made the time for somebody that needs a visit because they know what it's like to be in that situation so if you're ever someone that's like oh man i'm just like i'm in a low nobody has time for me they don't want to hear my hear what i have to say like you'd be surprised how many people do want to hear what you have to say and how just important it is to just talk to people just like Send somebody a message, send somebody a text, start the dialogue and be like, hey, I'm just going to lay it out on here. I am working through this. I need to talk about that. I'm wondering if you have time. Maybe they don't have time, but more likely than not, if they don't have time, they know somebody who does. And it'll maybe be someone with life experience that uh, will be really beneficial something for me is I've had such an array of different podcast guests, like half the time I can be like, okay, I'm going to get you to listen to that person's interview with me because they've been through that. They talked about it in that episode. And then from that point on, you can maybe reach out to them say, you listen to the podcast episode and that'd be a great icebreaker for you. So that was quite the tangent. So another question that I got was what would you do if life if I knew life was only going to be two more years, like if I was just going to live right now, I'm 27. If I was just going to live to age 29, what would I do? And it's kind of a cool question at this point in my life, 
because if you asked me like five years ago, I would probably say, well, maybe I'll switch jobs. But right now I'm doing a job where I feel a great sense of purpose. But I don't know, like two years, you know, like I think everybody in their life has different things that they want to achieve. Um, they want to maybe have kids or maybe they want to have some sort of a legacy, maybe they want to hold a big event or have a, a greater impact. I think right now, asking me right here, right now, in the most realistic terms, I would say I would like ramp up my focus on like the relationships in my life, like just on visiting with people, connecting, having genuine conversations. I'd be a lot more picky about who I spent time with. Like I don't like drama. I don't like uh, negativity and not to mean like I'm some kind of a unicorn that can't deal with like hostility, but it's just, if you're going to have a shitty attitude, like I don't have time for that, especially if I have two years left, like I I would be a lot more uh, blunt <laughs> when it comes to what I have time for, which is great perspective because there's no reason to not be blunt now, assuming that I have more than two years. Um, I would definitely probably start writing a book. I would like make myself accountable to writing material every day. I've had a few podcast guests that are published authors and it's just cool just how they did it. It's they've been chipping away at it over the days or they knew what they had to do to get to the end goal and so they did it they knew that they had to come up with like a thousand words and a certain deadline and they knew that they had to have like a topic at hand they knew that they had to start reaching out to publishers they knew what they had to do and so knowing that I only would have so much time I think would be a little bit of fire under my ass um, I would definitely want to prioritize family not that I don't already but like two years that it's not that much time. That time flies. But I think that's just a good reality check that anybody could use. My next question was finding contentment. So like just finding fulfillment, finding purpose. So what is that like for you? And I think there's a lot of common themes in the podcast. There's a lot of guests who say very similar things. There's a lot of instances that I've come across in my own life experience. And more often than not, um, and I know that the word core values comes up a lot, but I think it's a great way to articulate how to assess what will feel most purposeful to you. So core values, it's like you want to prioritize your family and your life, but it's not necessarily limited to who is related to you by blood, but just who who makes you feel supported and who gives you that feeling of, ha, I am at home, you know? So when it's coming down to finding contentment, that's not necessarily going to be a monetary goal. So why, why would I focus? I wouldn't focus on creating some six-figure business. I would focus on the quality of experience quality of time that i am spending because if if i did something and i was making a lot of money but it was making a lot of money to get to a certain outcome well i'm just always going to be chasing it because i'm always going to be filling this void that i've created with this thing that i'm doing that i don't really enjoy to make this money that isn't really fixing the problem at hand because I'm spending so much time doing the thing that I don't like, if that makes sense. You could get someone who does this like degrading job and I'm not even going to come up with an example, but just a job that you're just not proud of, but pays really, really good. But say it takes like 30 hours a week for them. And by the time that they finish that 30 hours a week, well, they need like 
20 hours a week to make up for the fact that they spent 30 hours a week doing something that made them feel gross or made them feel like insecure or made them feel just like garbage or tired or exhausted or lonely. So I would focus on like, I want to spend that 30 hours doing something that gives me the highest sense of purpose. And I'm just going to focus on finding a way to make that cover my bases. And it's, it's easier said than done. But if you're looking to really find something fulfilling, you might as well start from ground zero. There's no sense trying to come up with band-aid fixes. Like there's, there's no sense signing up to be the garbage man and then buying pizza because you hate being the garbage man, but you like pizza. Because at the end of the day, you're going back tomorrow, you're going to be the garbage man again. Does that make sense? So it's better to be the kid who read or the, the, the adult who reads stories to kids because you like reading stories to kids. Maybe it doesn't pay that good, but maybe you get really good at it and then you record YouTube videos of it and you can monetize that. Like there's just so many different angles and that's like a obscure way to see it, but it's an outlook at which you can suddenly make, make sense of making that into a job. There's so many people that I know right now that are making their living off of YouTube. So you, you can't even like belittle it because I literally have spoken with people who probably make more money than me per month making YouTube videos. So pretty much if you want a job to be your job, just work at it and work at it again, work at it again, work at it again, fight against adversity. Like if it's an uphill stream, swim harder. Um, yeah. So find the thing that makes you happy first and then find the way that makes it make you money. And it's going to take a lot of work, but it's better to do it that way than find the money and then hope that it suddenly makes you happy because it often is very difficult to work it that way. So perseverance, that, that was a word that was quizzed on me as to being something that was to be discussed in this episode. So what is perseverance to you? Like, is it a health thing? Is it a fitness thing? Is it uh, just having a bad day thing? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lump a bunch of stuff together. We got perseverance. We got motivation. We got dedication. Um, taking it day by day, one day at a time. And you want to think about, uh, like, say it's Monday. You got nothing going on for you. You don't have any work, but you have lots of bills. And you got stress and you got some stuff going on like in your personal life so that's extra stress so you got work stress you got personal stress you got financial stress and you got nothing planned for your day so you wake up what's the first thing that you do like are, are you going to feel bad for all this stuff going on it's really easy like i think everybody that listens to this is like oh yeah i'm gonna feel gonna feel pretty sorry for myself or are you going to kind of treat it as a fresh day and i don't want to be the guy that says one thing and does another but at least if i can if i can allude to the fact that i know that it works then maybe that'll hold me accountable too so here's what i'm going to say you start your day and regardless of what you are dealt, you have control over some things. So let's say you have a bed, make it, make your bed. Because there, there's a phrase that I've been using a lot and it's helpful for me and I use it with a lot of my close friends and it's like, you deserve nice things. And it's sort of a mantra. Some people are big into mantras, like just something that they say that they repeat, that they repeat, and then they suddenly believe it. So you start your day, nothing's going right for you. There's a lot of things going wrong, but you deserve nice things, so you make your bed. Okay, that's step one, out of the way. 
when it comes to nutrition, I think simple is better. There's going to be a lot of ways to approach this. But if you're someone who wants to be strong and have somewhat of a good composition, like I believe in happiness overall, but when it comes to coming up with the nutrition that your body needs to function at an efficient level and to have a good immune system and to make muscles strong, protein is really important. And if you want to simplify it, if you don't want to adhere to a diet or restrict yourself or really journal like hardcore on your macros, focus on protein because I think a lot of people are like, well, I, I ate healthy. I ate a salad. I, uh, I had some apples. I had some carrots. And it's like they're getting 40 grams of protein per day and they're 160 pounds. So what if they got 150 grams of protein and just saw what happened? Because I can almost guarantee that'll help. So you've made your bed and you made protein a focus. Suddenly you're feeling better than you would have had you not made that a focus. So something that a lot of people do is they journal. And journaling works for some people. It doesn't work for others. But it's something that's worth bringing up. I've had some podcast guests talk about how they visualize their day. They kind of picture it as a movie. They, uh, or they'll write down what they want to get out of their day in their journal they'll write out this list they'll write it out as if it's going to happen and once they put that pen to paper then it's almost like they're making it happen like they're they're writing a check in a in a matter of speaking so some people it works good to journal in the morning some people it works good to journal in the evening but if you got nothing going on and you're feeling down and you feel like you have no control take control over the make the bed get the protein do the journal. Simplest breakdown for protein, I figure I should segue into that and actually give some some better guidelines, is lump it up into four segments. So if you are, there's so many ways to do the calculation. So Google it. Honestly, there there's a lot of resources. You can send me a message. But honestly, if you are an active person, and you're looking to get leaner and get stronger, if you targeted a protein range close to your body weight, so say I'm like 174 pounds, so I wouldn't be scared of eating 180 grams of protein. And I'm active more than five days a week, and I want to maintain muscle mass while getting leaner. It cleans up my diet, it maintains my strength, and if I suddenly ate 200 grams of protein by accident, there is no research that can confirm that I will die. There, there have been many instances where people have tested this theory by consuming something in the ballpark of three times protein to body weight so they're they're like a 150 pound person eating like 300 450 grams of protein in a day and they just if nothing else they just feel uncomfortable but more often than not there there is really no negative side effect like they'll probably maintain their strength and not get lighter but when you're looking at protein, like if you're finding your protein from a Mars bar or from peanut butter, that is not your source of protein. You're finding your protein from eggs. You're finding your protein from lentils. You're finding your protein from lean meats. Like those are, those are the things. And when you're having to find like a, a large quantity, sometimes you got to get creative. That's when you toss in the chia seeds. So like oh, some people can eat a lot of chicken. But some people, that's like, that's too much chicken. Some people choose a different avenue. Like maybe they'll just want to find 
their protein through more vegetable based things and that's fine like as long as you're getting a good nutritional balance anyways that was a bit of a tangent we've gotten through our day we've gotten past journaling there's something that i that's my weirdest advice ever if you're self-employed and you're feeling discouraged I think something really cool to do that is maybe it's a placebo effect, maybe it's just something to keep you busy, but look around your house. Look at something that you just don't, just marry condo that shit. I don't, I'm pretty sure that's the term. Just finding things that do not bring you joy. I'll give you my best example. I used to work at Sportcheck and this was during a time when a whole bunch of like the inline skates were on clearance and I just happened to get a pair of inline skates, but they are skate size eight, shoe size nine and a half. I'm shoe size eight and I just read the thing wrong. I bought them in a hurry. So I got these inline skates that are a size and a half too big. So I can't use them, but they're in my house. So that is something that doesn't bring me joy because I'm not going to be able to use them. They're too big. So just list them on Kijiji. If you get 50 bucks, that's 50 bucks you didn't have before. And it's for something that you weren't going to use no matter what. All of a sudden, that day where it was nothing, you made 50 bucks. My other thing is, some people have a lot of bottles kicking around their house. And they don't think to take them to the bottle depot on an off day like that. Like say, say you're just going to make 7 bucks. Well, I think a lot of people like having coffee. Or having a little snack. And it feels way better if like you earned that money per se, like you worked hard for that money and then you had your snack. It's such a, it's like a motivational hack, if you will, because I think a lot of people can get down on themselves if they're backtracking during a slow day. But if you're able to get out of your house and get some fresh air and uh, create some income, then reward yourself at least you're going to approach your next day, which I'm assuming might be a, a tad busier, with a better attitude. Because you're like, no, I, I had a pretty good day. That was kind of fun. I went to like the local coffee shop and sat down, read a book, spent some time there, uh, sent some emails to some prospective clients or applied for some jobs. Like Just change it up. Get out of your stagnant house. Get Ruffle some feathers. Make, make it happen. The other thing is, if you are, say you're just looking for a job, the best thing to do, like you can email, 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 but emailing only works to a fault. What works even better is if you learn about, like say, say I wanted to be a owner of a restaurant. Am I going to be an owner of a restaurant by emailing an owner of a restaurant and asking for a job? Or am I going to be an owner of a restaurant by learning more about how owners of a restaurant became owners of a restaurant? So a great resource for that is you find find a restaurant that you just really like, figure out who the owner is, figure out if they've been on a podcast, and listen to it. Just find out more about them, learn about their struggles. If they don't have a podcast, call them up. Uh, find a way to, some of them have social media, message them. See if they'd be willing to go for coffee with you. More often than not, these people have been through some battles to get to their point where they are. And a lot of them would be happy to share a bit of time with you. Granted, they're going to have a busy schedule. But if, if you are someone who is not going to sell them something that they don't want, and if you have pure intentions, then they'll probably have time for you. And... What you could do in your downtime is you could be a person that starts your own podcast. Like, that's never a bad idea. I mean, if if you want to actually commit to something like that, that's a great thing that is perfect for self-development. It's perfect for being motivated because you're always going to have somebody new to visit. Um, yeah, so... Find the thing that you want to do, learn more about it and talk to those people. Don't just, don't just ask for opportunities, 
but learn about learn about their craft it's like if you wanted to be an nhl player would you email the oilers and ask if you could be on the oilers or would you practice 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 show that you have what it takes and then wait for or like show up to where you have to be for them to be looking for you does that make sense if you want if you want to be a good personal trainer you have to learn what good personal trainers do you have to uh, go through all the things that good personal trainers had to go through you have to have the have the quiet times when you don't have much clients but you had a good attitude so you found a way to get by you have to do the continuing education that teaches you to provide a better experience for the clients that you do have like this is these are my nuggets in my experience thus far as a personal trainer is that uh, you might have five clients on your roster but don't bitch about having five clients make those five clients feel like the most important people in the world because all it takes is for them to feel like a million bucks and they go and they talk they talk to their mom and dad they talk to their boyfriend girlfriend they talk to their boss and they're like hey you know what really makes me feel good in my week is when i go for personal training sessions because they make me feel like a million bucks and they pay so much attention that i feel like i get better every time you know who likes feeling better everybody so just focus on what you do have and that comes back to gratitude gratitude is something that i promote often um i feel like maybe some people get sick of it but i think people get sick of all kinds of things so if i enjoy promoting it i'm just going to keep keep promoting it so I often ask people to tell me five things that they're grateful for, especially if you're having a bad day. And it's it's not easy. Like, if someone experiences heartbreak or loss or defeat, or they're just not feeling well with with their mental health, maybe maybe they just had a weak moment and their nutrition isn't good and it's resulting in just negativity all around because they've been living off of uh, Skittles and Dr. Pepper. And it's just, they're not feeling at their best because they just haven't been eating proper meals. Like, if you can get a person to the place where they can start thinking about what they have instead of what they don't have, then they start approaching the rest of their situation, the rest of their day, with more of a feeling of abundance or at least attracting more good things to happen. A lot of the cruelest, most meanest people, the most judgy people have a horrible self image, which is something to take into account. Like if somebody ever bullies you or picks on you or degrades you or rates your podcast one star out of five, like i'm still like i'm not gonna let that go i can't believe somebody did that like what the hell anyways if somebody does that imagine what they feel about themselves like, if you come across a person that can do nothing but belittle the people around them that is rooted from what they feel in themselves and that sucks like when you actually take a moment to let that sink in that they actually just don't feel good about themselves well i mean then it becomes a less of a you problem more of a them problem you don't have to you don't have to take that on that's something that's important with empathy being a characteristic that i embody and i think a lot of people that are attracted to this po- podcast they embody empathy uh there's no sense if somebody feels awful um you can feel drawn into lifting them up but you will get nowhere if you both just feel awful like if we're just a bunch of awful feeling sheep well then we're just a bunch of awful feeling sheep but if one person feels down and another person knows something that they can do to elevate that other person you're going to get a lot further that way so Sometimes it comes down to gratitude. I've had some conversations with people that they say, 
I'm just, I, I feel alone and like, I might know some things about that person that they might've taken for granted. Um, they might be like, you know, I just, I never have anybody to talk to. And I might happen to know that they have one of the strongest marriages of anybody I met. And like, I've seen it face to face. I'm not just making any, like any assumptions. And they just, they forgot about it. Cause like they're seeing this person every day and it's easy to take that stuff for granted because there's people that don't have that friendship. They, they might have it elsewhere, but they don't have it to the extent that this person has it, like that ride or die, like that, you know, um, if somebody threatens you, I will kick their ass, kind of that kind of a relationship. So it's good to have like that perspective to be reminded. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of like, look, um, you got a roof over your head. There's a lot of people that don't have a roof over their head. Uh, one of the things I like about travel is especially if you're frugal about travel try going camping in hawaii i reflect on that a lot and i'm happy that my friends took me to hawaii and i'm happy that we got creative with our accommodations but like my very first trip we rented a jeep we got there it was about 10 p.m when we arrived we didn't have a place we uh we just didn't make arrangements we figured we would find somewhere to camp but we had never really planned it out to the extent that we had a campsite all, all planned um so two of my friends ended up sleeping in the jeep and me and my other friend we slept on a public beach i was freaking scared <laughs> like there's dudes walking around with flashlights um but it was just like I was tired and I was feeling a little bit sick. So I was like, I, I just want to sleep off this sickness. I don't want to direct the trip. So I was like, okay, I just, I have to sleep. I'm a little bit edgy because like, I don't know what happens in Hawaii. I don't know if we get kicked out. I don't know if they press charges or, or what, but it's basically, as long as you weren't making trouble, nobody had any problem with it for the most part, as far as I know. I mean, we were kind of sneaky, not advertising, to go sleep on public beaches. But I'm just saying, uh, if you want to save money, there's always a way. Um, but you know what that did for me? When I got home, I did not take for granted that I could unlock a door and go into a home that belonged to me. And I didn't have to worry about somebody flashing a flashlight at me. I didn't have to worry about my sleep being interrupted by a crab crawling on my leg. I could just go to bed and my bed has sheets and it's comfy and I have a laundry machine that I can use all the time. I don't have to do like the beach showers. Like there were so many things that I could reflect on after that trip. Um, like if you go backpacking, you just, you realize that we take like our, our security for granted, like that feeling of just home and structure. And then you get back to it and it's like, wow, like, okay. Um, there's a lot of things that I have going for me. Like I can go to the grocery store and know exactly where the food is. I can know exactly how to get to work. Like there's so much that we don't know when we go somewhere new that all of a sudden we realize just how easy we have it or how straightforward it is or how many amenities we have in Canada that there just isn't elsewhere. There's a lot of places that are tropical that you can go on a holiday and you see the people living there and they're happy, but they don't have like, it's they're not happy because of material goods. They're happy because they can play they're happy because they're active. They're happy because they're eating. They're happy because life is short. So that's something to reflect on. Reflecting on gratitude. Reflecting on what we have. Remembering what we have. Little things like that. Um, Yeah, and like at the end of the day, something that I don't do personally, but I understand the merit behind it. Just at the end of the day, I'm just... I write messy, so it's hard for me to, to truly habitually journal or habitually write stuff down. But for a lot of people that have a lot of things on their mind, 
Um, it's a good habit to write it all out in a book and just get it onto paper. There, there are some studies that prove how writing it on paper is more therapeutic than typing it out on like a, a phone or a device. But then there's always going to be the anomaly. There's always going to be someone that just their brain works different. They just grew up with devices all the time. So they know nothing else other than that. Like it's changing very diverse world with every generation that comes through. Some people only know cell phones. Some people used to dial their neighbor by spinning the dial on the, on the phone with the cord. Like, uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways to, to grow up in life and a lot of different influence. Um, there's, there's something important that I think that sometimes people forget about. And it's just like a lot of us have family or people that are like family, but not all of us remember to really stay connected with them. Like for, for example, say you have, you have parents, you have your two parents, they're living on their own, they're retired. Um, all the kids are out of the nest, but like the parents have all these life lessons and how many people are out there like asking their parents questions about how they got through stuff and what their best memories were like just finding things to really harness the legacy to to bring that forth and maybe maybe you don't have parents but maybe you have like an aunt and uncle or maybe you have like pick your oldest cousin that you have it's just something that i think is is really great to to almost have that as an external goal like a lot of us were like okay I want to get to a blank concert. Like maybe it's a Tool concert or a Metallica concert or a Billy Talent concert. Like whoever it is, like that's just their goal. But how many people are like, I want to hear every story that Uncle Bob has, you know, or Uncle Uncle Steve or Auntie Betty Sue. I'm just going to toss out a bunch of examples so as many people can relate as possible. Um, it's, it's about finding and focusing on the little things. Sometimes we think that we have to go and hop the fence to find something great when something great was right in front of us the whole time. You, you ask yourself why there's so many things that come up where people feel so stressed and I think it's because we're distracted from sort of what's what's in front of us. Um, or we, we are underutilizing the perspective that is offered to us through our direct community. Like, I really like to talk to a diverse selection of people when it comes to my podcast or just any of my connections or coffee conversations or the clients that I train like anybody that I talk to regardless of their background regardless of like what they do for work their ethnicity their age their experience what they're passionate about they're always going to have something to offer it's about asking the right questions and learning how to listen better it's when we don't ask questions or we don't listen that we think that nobody has anything to offer and we are just going to get nowhere with with who we are surrounded by if if you do not see resoundingly good qualities in the people that you see most often then you are either not seeing much in yourself or you have blatantly surrounded yourself with the wrong people, but quite often it stems from you, which can be a harsh reality for a lot of people that think they have a bunch of bozos in their life. But maybe that's your wake up call. I think, again, a lot of the people that listen to this feel uh, some sense of abundance. They feel, wow, like I really like this health and wellness space, or I really like 
to feel positivity. Like that, that seems to be the kind of personality that gravitates towards the stuff that I put out. But you always have to, to remember it starts with you. Um, so some people might be wondering, why did I start the podcast? And I don't know if I've answered it before, but I'll just answer it again. It kind of comes down to, like, I, I have friends that have very fitness-focused podcasts where they'll talk to guests about hypertrophy and they'll talk to guests about macros and they'll get down into the nitty gritty of the science and they'll talk about business and they'll talk about coaching and they'll talk about different programs and uh, just more career focused stuff. And I thought, well, like, yeah, I really enjoy listening to that, but what, what happens when I've put all of my eggs in my career basket I'm feeling just drained and then all of a sudden something happens to like a family member like how do I deal with that because nobody ever talks about that really and I think that we sometimes take our health for granted we don't ever foresee these other things that happen and I thought well I mean I think everybody's going to go through a tough time that something that's all my podcast has gone through. And I think the more instances where we have that, uh, that support through conversation, the, the better off we'll be. So like an example, like say you're just getting into becoming a paramedic. Well, I've had a guest that is a paramedic and they've had to have some tough days and we discussed that and that'll be something to draw from. Say, you're getting into firefighting. Well, I've had a guest that's a firefighter. Um, if you're going through dialysis as a personal trainer and you're a new dad, well, I've had a guest for that. Say you got bullied and you were tired of getting bullied, so you wanted to get into fitness, but you thought, well, I'm, I'm insecure or I got picked on, so I couldn't ever be this giant jacked dude. Well, I've got guests for that too. Say you had a debilitating knee injury and it just took you down down a dark, dark path where you just felt upset and sad and then your significant other lost a loved one and it's like, wow, could it get any worse? Well, I have people who have gotten out of that dark, dark tunnel too. Like, If you are open to the conversation, there is so much growth and so much strength that can be taken from the experiences of others and to be able to collect like dozens of episodes of that is pretty cool like when you think back i i've listened to old episodes of what i've recorded and it, yes it's very biased it's my my podcast and i'm listening to it again but it's just i can hear a new thing from listening to it again and i'm the one that recorded it so if i can find something new a new nugget a new anecdote a new lesson from a second listen a third listen that that says something because i was the one who listened to it the first time i was the one who asked the questions the first time so it's all a bias it's all like i got to hear what i wanted to hear i got to ask them the questions that i wanted answers to and maybe like six months later, six months after the recording, I listened to it again. I'm like, wow, that answers a new question that I didn't even know that I had. Or it could be an episode where it's like, I didn't even know I was going to go through this, but this episode from a year ago helped me go through it. There, There's so much to get from that and you get it all up into the public domain and it, it's like lifting a whole bunch of people up at once. And that's kind of, that's the name of my game. That's what I'm passionate about. That's what I enjoy. So I would have to say that that is why I did the podcast. And it's super cool being able to connect with people from the US, being able to have conversations with people while they're in Germany, being able to have conversations with people when they're in Iceland. Like I've, I've really stretched the, uh, stretch the limits of where my guests call me from and I try to keep it local as well like for anybody who might be new here um the lifestyle chase is based out of Edmonton 
but I don't limit it to Edmonton. I try and keep the roots here. I try and get some in-person interviews whenever scheduling permits, but I also want to broaden that audience a little bit, get, get the local people learning about people outside of Edmonton and the people outside of Edmonton learning about people inside of Edmonton. And I think it's good for perspective to help you learn like, wow, we, we have some really cool people locally. And then it's, it's good for people that are far away where they've gotten so used to interviewing the same fitness trainers or the same motivational speakers. And then I'm like, well, here, I've got this person that lives a very humble life, but they're very proud. They have all their bases covered, but man, their story is unlike any other story you've ever heard. And then that encourages someone from like Michigan to start looking for stories like that in their inner circle, to start interviewing like their client or to start uh, having more conversations with their neighbor or to ask more questions when it comes to their own family. I think communication and connection in all of your relationships is versatile. It helps you to get more out of every interaction that you have to help with stress, to help with mental health, to help with joy. Like you, if you don't change the oil in your vehicle of life, you will burn out. It'll just putz to a stop and that's not good. So think about training your relationships with others on the level of communication and conversation and transparency as doing an oil change in your life. Like we go to the gym, we put in the reps, we put in the sets, we put in the headphones, we do all those things. We go home, we meal prep, we watch the video, we listen to the podcast, we do those things. But do we put that same focus on how we speak with people, the questions we ask, how we treat others, our way that we express empathy, like are we expressing empathy by like, oh, I'm sorry for your loss, or do we express empathy by doing things without being asked to do them? Uh, I think sometimes in an instance where it it is maybe not not frowned upon like i'll just give you an example let's say somebody's come across some hard times they're really upset and you know that they have a front lawn what's going to happen if you mow their lawn they might get offended but maybe that'll be something that they really needed right there and a lot of people are quick to uh put something on a person's message board on on the internet and that'll offend them but they aren't as quick to put forth an action that's a genuine positive action with the chance of offending them like they're they're faster to be a risk taker as a keyboard cowboy and slower to be a risk taker as someone who leads by example like walks their talk i think people love to take their shit out on other people they love to put other people down because that is the fast track to feeling better. But for how long? Or how much better do you feel? Like, really? Like, if if you're in a mud puddle and you're only above other people because you stuck your head up, how high, how elevated are you? Versus if you found a way to get out of that mud puddle and you showed others and you found a way to stand up tall and you showed others, like you're you're gonna feel pretty good standing up tall amongst others and if nothing else if somebody asks like how how did you get out of that mud puddle they're gonna be like that person that girl that guy whoever it may be they did it and that's gonna give you that emotional response of feeling good it feels good to give that that's been a reoccurring theme um, so that's really all I have for you today. I just wanted to change it up. I wanted to 
give you a bit of a break or maybe give me a little bit of, of a break from having all these different guests because the frequency of guests that I've had on this podcast has been unreal. Who would have ever thought that in about 14 months I would have talked to approximately 80 different people because like some episodes I've had two guests, some episodes I've had three guests. So between 80 different episodes and some of them being compilations and some of them being somebody interviewing me, I would say I've had about 80 people and that's pretty cool. If you ask for my advice, I would say try to do the same. You don't have to record it, but just try to get more out of what you have in life. There's a lot of people living out there with less than us, with worse luck, with uh, just, there's always gonna be somebody better, there's always gonna be somebody worse. So don't compare, just focus on what you have, what you can do to make your day better. And stay motivated, stay motivated in the way that you are someone who deserves nice things, you have things to be grateful for, you have control over things like making your bed, you very, very likely have a roof over your head because if, if nothing else, you have a Wi-Fi connection. Like, you have access to amenities. There's a very good chance that you're living in Canada. There's a higher chance that you're living in a major market area that has things, that has resources, that has all these different opportunities, different community groups, different volunteer opportunities, different courses that like there's there's university courses that you can take for free and you got to look for them like they're they're not advertised very often but if you look for them we don't have any excuses like we're just making them up we if we're making excuses we're looking for them so don't look for excuses look for opportunities look for things that can make your day one percent better if I could give you one piece of advice on how to live your life authentically to the fullest, I would say find a reason to tell three people that you love them today. And if I could ask one more thing, if you made it this far, I would really benefit from some ratings on iTunes. So you can look at iTunes or Apple Podcast. That is basically the main platform in which you can leave a rating. And if you felt so inclined, a rating and a comment would mean the world to me. It feels really great. It helps with the ranking. It helps get my podcast out to a broader audience. And sharing on social media, I can't emphasize that enough. When somebody shares it in their story, it gives me that street cred that like one of my friends not only listens to it, but they listened to it and enjoyed it so they wanted to share with everybody that they know and maybe you don't want to share it i can accept that but if you did it makes me feel better encourages me to keep on keeping on i hope you enjoy this one thanks for listening